Okay, we'll come back again in this part. So, in this part, we're going to discuss about how can we write the input signal or you can say stimulus. Okay, so in order to simulate the circuit, the input signals need to be known so as to generate an output signals. Okay, the input signals are often called the circuit stimulus. Okay, the input signals are called as stimulus. We can say the input signal was like that, or we can ask you, we can say. Suppose stimulus was like this. So you have to understand, you have to uh, remember the both names, input signals or stimulus or test bench. You can call test bench, okay? An HDL module to write the provide, uh, provide the stimulus circuit, it's known as also test bench, okay? So how to write it? It is almost the same like the uh, program of writing the corresponding circuit code almost the same like it we have to start with a uh, keyword module okay we have to give the name okay but here we will not give any parameter inside the first bracket we just will write the module th then just the name and then we have to declare the input and output in this part we don't need to declare the internal connections. In these circumstances, inputs are called as REG. You can see here, inputs are called as REG and output are, our output variables will be declared as wire. Okay. And there is another additional uh, line which will describe for which circuit we are going to use this is stimulus or this test bench. So here we have to use the name of our this circuit. Okay. Now there are a few more keyword. One is initial. Then we have to start with another keyword begin. And then we will write the test benches. That means the inputs and the delays, inputs and the delays, inputs and the delays. Then we will finish it by a dollar sign and finish keyword with a semicolon and then end, then end module. This is the structure or syntax of writing the test bench. So here in this example, you can see we used input a b c on uh, we initialize a b c as zero on zero timing that means without having any delay we have given the input a as zero b as zero c as zero then we will give a delay that means we will wait for 100 nanosecond then we will change the value of a b c as 1, 1, 1. But this is not like just like our uh, high level language. In this circumstance or in this environment, we will use a different keyword like we will say A equal to 1 bit 0 or value. That means 1 bit means if you say it's a parallel input like 8 bit input then we should say 8 bit 8 binary number okay but since in every inputs we use just one single input single bit so we write 1 bit 0 in the same way for b we wrote 1 bit 0 for c we did the same 1 bit 0 and after that, we used a delay. Okay. Here, we will just write hash and the amount of delay. And then again, the inputs, if we change it. Also, if we don't change any input, we don't need to write. So, this is the example you can see here, the example of uh, this circuit where we initialized the input as 000, 
Then after 100 nanosecond, we changed all the input A, B, C as 1, 1, 1. But if we write the test bench for this scenario, what would be? So, in this scenario, let me write very tiny way, I'm sorry for that. So, here our initial value was 0, 0, 0. That means A equal to 1 bit 0, B equal to 1 bit 0, C equal to 1 bit 0. Then after how many time, on what time we changed it? On 20. So that means we have to use a delay that means this input will be continued till 20 nanoseconds. So we will provide a delay here. We can say 19 or 20, whatever you think. So we, we use 20 nanosecond. No semicolon is required. And then we just changed the value of A. B and C was remain same. So only we change the value of A equal to 1 bit as 1. Okay. Then on what time we change the value of B on 40. So 40 times means what was our delay? 20. So 20 plus 20 means 40. Here on this time we change the value of B. So B equal to 1 bit 1. Since we didn't change the value of A and C here. Then we change the value of C on which time? On 50 nanosecond. So here the delay was hash just 10 and then C equal to 1 bit 1. And we continued it until what time? 120 nanosecond. So we used 20, 20, 10, that means 15 nanosecond we used. We still continued till 120 means we still have 70 nanosecond to run this program. Then we will finish with a dollar sign and finish keyword followed by semicolon and then end then end module okay so that is the way how we can uh, write the corresponding test bench for the input code okay so it was a uh, very initial level discussion of HDL or the description language. If you have interest or if you really want to work with FPGA, then you need to learn a lot about this HDL kind of language. Actually, all the languages are the same. Almost all the languages are the same, you know. It requires some variables. It We need to know the syntax of mathematical operations. Okay, we need to know the syntax of loop and the branch instructions and then we need to know the rule of uses of functions okay so to learn this language you have to understand this thing and beside that since it's a hardware description language we need to take care of inputs okay for our high level language usually we take the input from the keyboard but for low for low level language we usually take the input from each pin or from each port. Okay, so for this kind of language, you need to know or you need to uh, understand how can we give the input for the logic circuit. Okay, so once again, it was a very initial discussion about HDL. I just introduced HDL in this session. Oh, okay, so here is a simulation as I told you in last le lecture. It is a simulation environment. So again, for this environment, first you have to write one code for this circuit. Then you have to write another code for this inputs. And then you can run in this environment, simulation environment, you can simulate it 
by a pair of circuit and input test bench then you will see the output okay in this environment you will see the output in the form of time diagram okay you will not see the output as in this table okay so in your exam i am going to give you a logic circuit and instruct you to write the corresponding hdl code then i will discuss how the input will come for the circuit and until what time it will be continued you will write the corresponding test bench and lastly i will tell you to draw this timetable and of course corresponding time diagram these four things hdl code for circuit hdl code for test bench timetable and time diagram okay so that was the thing about this session so this is the simulation and you can see the simulation output on the left bottom corner and if we enlarge this one the time diagram will be like this so you can see here the output of x was undefined until i think 30 nanosecond am i right and the output of y was unknown until 10 nanosecond okay and then after 30 we got the output and after 10 we got the output of y okay you please practice it and i will give you some practice uh, circuits and some input test bench you will practice in your home thank you very much